Good morning, everybody. Time to rise and shine. I'm Shelby Barrett, the Stonette for the Stoned Roadie Show, and it's time to wake and bake with Craig Reed and Griff Martin. When we get up in the morning, along with coffee, toast, and cake, if you like the old stone roadie, you like to wake and bake. Now let's join Craig Reed and Griff Martin as we head out on the road. So sit right back, buckle right in. It's a wake and bake morning show. It's a wake and bake morning show. It's a wake and bake morning show. Good morning. The Stoned Rody Show, podcast number 147, Wake and Bake, the morning buzz number 30, action. Well, good morning, Earthlings, and looky here, looky here. It's Monday morning, March 25th. Monday, it's the day that you all guys got to return back to work, you know. Not like me and Griff. Me and Griff <laughs> retired. We don't we don't really give a damn what what day of the week is, but yeah, yeah. Monday morning, I, I hope you had time to get up and shine your shoes before you had to go to work this morning, but Anyways, enough jibber jabber. My name is Craig Reed, aka the Stone Roadie, and this is my rock co host, the rocket scientist, Griff Martin. And the real podcast is the uh, the pre conversation before the podcast <laughs> yeah i did all that better on the on the on the yeah, craig and i we tried to some... think of an intro i sit there and try to think of clever things to think it, of an yeah, intro. We... Then, then i have to try to repeat it and i don't do very good at it <laughs> yeah, but, what I'm but hell about... it's it's you know it's four in the morning you know it's almost four twenty, and i've been already been a waking in the bacon <laughs> yeah but but if we had like the video of of you before the podcast is what i'm talking about <laughs> that's the that's the good podcast and if, i can't get yeah. craig to record that because he's he's <laughs> he's practicing so but if you guys only knew <laughs> But yeah, yeah, everybody go to work and pay your taxes and <laughs> me and Craig can sit around and get paid doing nothing. Yeah. 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 And uh make sure you 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 tell your boss, yes, sir. Yeah, <laughs> ain't nothing like yes, retirement. Yeah. Yes, a lot of a lot of you people that from what I understand ain't never gonna retire, man. I yeah. Don't yeah, you know, I feel oh yeah, well bad for you. Yeah. What they do is they dangle that carrot out there, you know, and they want you to keep working and hopefully you're gonna have a little uh blood clot break break loose from that <laughs> vaccine you got and you're gonna die. And so they don't have no, to tell they, you. They then wanna they can, put you they wanna <laughs> put you on that Ozempa. And and it, it don't cure obesis, obesity. It just it just maintains it, so they can say you that for the rest of your life. You can sit around and shoot yourself with their drugs. They sell you after after they got you fat from all the shit they feed you. Well, I'm glad you pronounced it wrong, so they can't sue you. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, uh, yeah. It, it, I tell you what, I, I've been, you know, enjoying my little boat, you know, bad company too. And I've been seeing a lot of big old heifers out there on those boats. That's bad company too. T W O. No, T O O. Yeah. T O O. Bad company too. Bad company also after bad company one, you know, Gary, yeah, I saw, I saw one boat out there and, and is having trouble pulling the skier up. I was thinking, man, you need to offload that payload over there on the dock. <laughs> uh, yeah, I bet that two-stroke will pull. I bet that two-stroke you got on that thing will pull them right up out of the water. 
Yeah, I haven't uh, I haven't uh, had anybody to demonstrate that yeah. with yet. So any volunteers? <laughs> Them things are snappy if they're like any a regular two cycle. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's good. It's a good little outboard. Nineteen seventy eight, seventy horse. Um, I think I'd get it up to like thirty nine. I got my banshee started the other day. It only took 20 kicks. <laughs> yeah, that thing's been that sitting no for a couple of years, huh? Oh, not that long. I I, yeah. fuel, I, I, I refuel it every six six months. I just haven't ran it. I didn't run it all winter. I didn't run it all winter. Yeah, and what year, what there, year is it? Uh, 90, 99. Yeah. Do you run that ethanol free fuel in it? I run uh, Sunoco uh, Premium in it. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, so Craig, why don't we talk about that contest? You know, uh, a little bit about that contest because uh, I think uh, give people a little update on what's going on. Now, you said you want it to close April first. Well, right? you know, well, you know, I don't know how to do this. You know, it's our second one, and we had some issues with the first one. People said they weren't. It, didn't didn't know if they were entered or not. We tried our best to, you know, to you know make it specific who was in there and counted off the names. And then people said, "Well, I might even count off my name." So, yeah, I, I thought maybe we would close the uh, drawing or close the entry on uh, April first. You know, so if you, if you send in your entry on April second, theoretically we ain't gonna count it. But you know what? Uh, then that'll give me a couple weeks to get get a get a list together, and then hopefully we can um, have a, 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 a just have a podcast and just just get on here and just give your name and your number, and then when we have the drawing, uh, we can uh, you know you'll you'll know your number, and and when we pull your number. Uh, you know, you'll know if you'll know immediately who 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 won or whatever. You know, we're we're trying to figure that out. I'm I I don't I don't have enough dollars or fifty cent pieces to use them as as pieces to uh, uh, to draw. But I got enough by centennial quarters. I'll just put uh, put your number on a quarter and we'll draw. I think we'll draw quarters this time. And uh, yeah, then. Uh, We'll do, we'll have the drawing about two weeks after we close the entry, and that'll give everybody. And then we'll try to announce who whose number it is, and then if you don't hear your name and your number, you can write write me, email me, and say, "Hey, I wrote my I wrote I, you know I I entered and you didn't call my name," and we can try to rectify the problem, and we can try to not not any, have anybody not get butt hurt this time, you know. We had a few, we had, we had a few people that said they didn't get in the entry last time. So not too bad though. They weren't. It like wasn't bad. They weren't like liberals. They weren't like crying. <laughs> you know? They were. They were whining a little bit. You know? <laughs> yeah, but, not not like a liberal though. But yeah, but this, this drawing's a lot a lot better. I think we got we're giving away a lot more stuff. So yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so they might whine a little harder on this one if they lose so, it. I know. So maybe fling that uh, that background up there with the email on it there, Craig. Oh, yeah, it. yeah, let me. <clears throat> yeah, I wanted to. And then oh. um, just to uh, also mention, you know, the, uh, the uh, pictures that you see back here behind me, these three pictures, they have been sold. And... Um, that uh the gentleman ricky wascom who he doesn't really want me to mention but the guy's a great uh a great board member at the monument and he um does a lot of does a lot for him and those pictures are going to be kind of like tucked away for something that might be happening special there in the future so that's kind of cool and that money goes to um mark howard and he's going to be sending you the check craig and he also bought that my grass is blue shirt and that money goes to gene odom um and we'll uh once we get everything ready to um disperse the funds we'll we'll go over who all donated right craig for the uh, yep yeah 
<laughs> I didn't realize that was for sale. I might have put a bid on that one. My grass is blue, but <laughs> I think he's no, gonna... no, no. That's an extra large. You can't oh, clear an extra oh, large. Oh, oh well. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, yeah, that was, uh, <coughs> and that actually came from, um, uh, the, I guess the original batch that Leon Wilkerson wore his shirt from. So kind of like, you know, somebody had some, uh, an order of shirts, uh, that was the same exact shirt that Leon had. So not these, not the shirt that Leon had, but just, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, you guys will kill me if I don't get that right. So, uh, but yeah. And, um, <clears throat> and so, uh, uh, that, uh, we'll, we've got some other things like, uh, that Dobro and I'll be, uh, putting that up next and we're trying to get rid of this stuff. So we don't go on eBay with it. Cause, uh, you know, they're kind of robbing from the funds, uh, you know, the, with the fees. So, um, then uh hey craig don't you have a um a solar eclipse coming up there your way yeah april 8th yeah it goes right right over cleveland yeah they have a big watch party up in up in cleveland they're having a big big watch party up there yeah i know people that are going up there but yeah it goes right over right over this area yeah yeah, that might be a, a good time to uh blame something on something for somebody to blame something on I was gonna, I was gonna get out my telescope and you know check out what kind of lenses and stuff I need. I probably got the lenses. I bought some guys a whole outfit, you know, about two, three years ago. <laughs> Never have used it. It's a real nice I can telescope. It's a Mead eight inch uh, uh, light switch. It's yeah, it, it you just point it up in the sky and it figures out where it's at and goes right there. And it's real cool, man. But uh, heck, the the news station up here, they're they're going to um, film the whole thing. It's it's a big event up here, and they're going to film the whole thing. So I imagine they'll they'll get some pretty good footage of it. Yeah. So I don't think I'll need. Didn't that. you say they were saying something about you need to stock up some water and? Hey, they, they said they yeah. They said this is the weirdest thing. This is the first solar eclipse they've ever had, where people are telling them to stock up with food and, and, and essentials to last you a few days. Cause I don't know. There's some bi biblical prophecy going on with this one. Some, you know, some, some weird things going on. It's like it, 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 it crosses paths with a city called rapture and it's, it's all kind of weird, you know, things. Yeah. I remember that religious cult that, uh, on that one, Oh, it, it was an eclipse. It was an asteroid, and they they all killed themselves so they could hitch a ride on that asteroid. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. That was the the called up out in California. That uh, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> that that was what was that called? Yeah, that yeah. They all covered themselves in blankets and stuff. <clears throat> was that the same? Yeah, yeah. I don't remember what that one was called. Yeah, yeah. They I don't know how they did it. Um, they must have drank. They some drank. Jim they Jones drank some kind of poison, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. And then covered yeah. themselves up. Well, who knows? Yeah, mental illness was per well. That was years ago. People were mentally ill back then too. <laughs> yeah. They, they, you know what's kind of weird is making making more sense is is uh, Charles Manson's kind of like making more sense. I've been watching some, <laughs> some videos with him, and the That's guy scary. Was, was actually you know made some sense about some things he was telling on those people that were that were trying to, to do the same things they're doing to us now so i don't know man I'm, I'm maybe i'm getting going much too much down the rabbit hole when i'm when i'm saying <laughs> Hanson's making sense <clears throat> but uh yeah because you know i'm sure i'm sure he was a scumbag but uh yeah, and so a lot of good comments, Craig, on the uh, movies, on your movies, man. The uh, at the end of the last podcast, the uh, the home, the Craig Reed reels. Uh, oh yeah, Chad and yeah, my ex wife and Gene and his daughter and Gary and Martha and uh, yeah, a lot of people enjoyed yeah. those. Uh, and uh, Ronnie, I mean, 
yeah you know ronnie out there fishing and you know you could see judy caught a fish and that's pretty cool you know that's back when everybody got along you know well, i mean it's like <laughs> you know why did that have to stop you know gene and, and uh gary out there pumping water out of the pump and you know everybody's smiling i don't know were you guys arguing and stuff you know off off the uh off the set <laughs> 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 no no we had a good time and good that was great that was a lot of fun out there that weekend i still remember that you know, yeah what were yeah. you guys doing out there were you we just went out for a getaway just you know me and my family and ronnie and his family and gene and his family just you know they had that winnebago i think i followed them in my mercedes i'm sure i did yeah and who was doing the uh, video and when you were in the video? Uh, hard to say. Yeah. Hard to say. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It was so long ago. I mean, I can see where you wouldn't be able. That's a, it's kind of, kind of strange, you know. Being there was a lot you. of people had their hand in operating that camera. Everybody wanted to get it on, get it on filming. That's why you see Gary taking film and Billy taking the film and, you know, Steve, everybody, you know, like, like, you know, got into taking movies with that camera. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Yeah. And I saw you were taking pictures with a 35 millimeter too. Yeah. I got both those cameras at the same time. Yeah. Over in Japan. We all did. All of us got our cameras over at the same time. Alan and Steve and Cassie and me and. Yeah. That was the big thing. Either you had a Minolta or a or a nikon oh, I canon <clears throat> canon or nikon that's they they all got cannons but i'm the only one that got oh them. yeah canon canon <clears throat> yeah, they all nikon. got cannons i got a nikon hey, did you get it overseas mm -hmm, japan yeah yeah yeah, over, yeah japan, it was japan. like five five hundred and fifty thousand yen <laughs> back then <laughs> yeah I think both those cameras cost me about 800 bucks or a thousand bucks. I don't know, something like that back then, back in 76. Do you still have the, uh, the eight millimeter camera? No, it got smashed in the plane. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah it got smashed. Yeah. You, or that's what you think happened to it. Right. Or you saw no, it got smashed. I used to have it around here somewhere. I've lost track of it. I've lost track of a lot of stuff. I've got, I've still got a lot of stuff. I just don't want to say I have stuff because I can't find it. <laughs> when I, I find it, I'll announce what I have. But I, I've got stuff. You know, I've got stuff. I just don't know if I'd ever be able to find it. <laughs> well, if you, you know, if you had that camera, even though it's all smashed up, and those videos, that's some, that's a pretty cool package right there. Yeah. Yeah, you know, that you could leave the tanner. So here's the videos, <laughs> and here's the camera that shot it, and it was in a plane crash. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, pretty cool. And then for us to go by, back and find a luggage tag that came off <laughs> right before you went down to the uh, monument, we found that uh, they, well, we My didn't. luggage uh, tag, yeah, that was, that was where... And my mine was like the only tag that was, uh, I don't know. I've never seen another luggage tag that was dug up out there. I, yeah, mine's crazy. the only, mine's the only one that was ever dug up out there that I don't know that I've ever seen. I've never seen another luggage tag dug see, up. See, I there. think Jesus for survivors right now is writing that down, going, "Yeah, <laughs> see, that makes sense." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, he's he's you know, thinks everything happens for a reason, just like we do. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, it, it, it's, uh, it is amazing. Some of the stuff that's happened just out of coincidence, you know, that. Oh um, yeah. I, you know, I get, I get, I get French benefits from doing this. I mean, last, last week I talked about getting my, uh, my pond dug out and it kind of has to do with this podcast, you know, from, uh, yeah he's land, land <laughs> clearing and 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 uh land clearing services yeah he you know he you know, offered to come up here and do that for me and uh and uh 
you know, I, and just because he agrees with uh, what we're doing for the for the forgotten survivors, you know, not not because I've never I haven't talked to him that much about it, but I don't think he agrees with all. Probably don't agree with all of my opinions on things, but he certainly agrees with us, you know, supporting the sur forgotten survivors, and uh, yeah, that's why he's coming up here and uh, <clears throat> and taking care of that for me. I've I've tried to have uh, get excavating companies to come around here and do that, and <clears throat> they promised they'll show up, and they never did. And he found out about it and said he'd come up here and do it. Man, I really appreciate yeah. it, Tom. Tom from Par Parsons Land Clearing and and Services and what's funny that's kind of like kind of like goes along with my all my divine intervention stuff because my my par my 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 family came from Parsons West Virginia you know no, this guy oh wow I didn't Parsons. know that. oh well that's just too coincidental isn't it <laughs> yeah. You mentally. might be related. You might be related to that guy. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow. <laughs> well, we got some comments that we can go over uh, from the last podcast. And um, at the end of the uh, jibber jabber here, though, we got Dr. Renan Richmond, who was the doctor at the hospital. And, it, and listening to it, you might have to turn it up a little bit because uh for some reason you can't hear him on the phone um when the guy's asking him uh mike o'hare is asking him the questions he's uh kind of faint so sorry about that nothing i can do in the software to turn that up i mean somebody probably could but i can't um so uh listen for that at the end of the podcast and then um we'll go over these comments here craig uh uh, <clears throat> let me see here. Um, the, uh, T for Texas in, uh, 1976 Winterland, Huey Thomason and Billy Jones on stage with the band. Do you remember that Craig? Um, partially. Yeah, partially I do. So what, what was the deal on that? Why, what was those guys? Uh, what was that, what was up with that? Um, how'd they get brought in? Uh, we were, we were, uh, good friends with, uh, the outlaws, you know, starting from when I first got with the band and we played up at Richards and the, the outlaws was opening, opening for us. And, and, uh, it would, the band, the both bands just kind of hit it off and we became, like friends, rivals, friends, you know. I think, think when we, they had kind of an attitude like they were really, really good, you know. And their manager was Charlie Brusco, and I think he had them all pumped up like they were going to come in and kick Leonard Skinner's ass. That was kind of the, kind of the attitude they had, and we just kind of laughed, and chuckled it off, you know. That <laughs> they were all pumped, uh, had their pump hit chests all pumped out like they were gonna come in there and whip our ass you know we were just laughed about it you know you know but they were a good band and they 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 really caught the caught caught the eye of ronnie you know and um and uh so they uh skinner kind of helped them get started from the get-go kind of gave them the put in a good word for them and you know kind of got people listening to them, you know, and that's kind of how they got their start, in my opinion. There, you know, there's, people ask me questions, you know, and all I can do is is answer questions <laughs> in, in my opinion. You know, it's like, it's like a couple of weeks ago, people were asking, you know, what what would ask me, what what do I think Ronnie would think? You know, I <laughs> got that, you know, that's kind of ridiculous for a damn roadie to be, kind of commenting on what they think of Ronnie Van Zant would be thinking, you know, but, you know, everybody's got an opinion on what Ronnie would be thinking, you know, and I don't know, Ronnie, I think if he was a, 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 in these days, I think he'd be writing a lot of political songs. I mean, there certainly is enough ammunition going oh yeah going around uh, you know it's, it's like if you want to write about something god just take your pick on the what's the stupidest thing going on you know but uh 
you know, Kid Rock, he's, you know, it's kind of dangerous for people in the entertainment to, to voice an opinion one way or the other when it comes to politics or religion because you're going to piss off 50% of the people no matter what you do. But, you know, Kid Rock, he, you know, he he's not sponsored by anybody. He's smart enough not to, you know, he can say what he wants to say, and he he's not catering to anybody. He can just... You know, he, he don't have any sponsors. I think Ronnie would be kind of like the, the, the same kind of way. You know, I, I think he would be the same way. And, and same with Ted Nugent, you know, and they're, they're the two most out, outspoken people for the, for the, my choice of president, you know, and to me, there's God, there's no other choice. You have, you either have Mr. T or you have uh, socialism, really. I mean, and the, the, <laughs> you know they, they they came up with the 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 Biden uh, the Biden uh, the what were they called the Biden by the Biden crime family you know they, they oh, just yeah pulled pull that out of from, out of the air and it, God the guy just blatantly lies my God and he's been like that his whole career you can back go back and watch things that he just blatantly lied about i mean his college thing and and, and everything he just lies about it and it just seems like they just lie and just it's no big deal and, and god you know ronnie wrote about in birmingham they love the governor boo 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 i don't really know what he meant by <laughs> boo 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 except for you know yeah. uh, you know wallace was kind of like um a, a, a white, uh, uh, you know, a racist or whatever. What would you call a racist these days? I don't know if, uh, you know, Ronnie was going boo, 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 but for, for that or whatever. And then, you know, there's always, you know, other songs like I Can Feel the Concrete Slowly Cleep and Lord Take Me in Mind Before That Comes. You know, it's a little bit political, but yeah, I, th I think he would be. Um, on the political side of writing songs these days and how I got off on that tangent, I'll never know, but let's move on to the next question, I guess. But That's yeah, but then there's answer. also the song that with a Saturday night special. You yeah. Know, yeah. Gun I mean, control. Yeah. Yeah. So Ronnie, would he be a big gun control guy now? You know? Well, uh, I when, think I think Ronnie had some guns pulled on him a few times, and <laughs> Ronnie didn't carry a gun, and he, and he, he, he maybe liked that's fight, why, huh? but man, he didn't want to get shot, you know. So he yeah. he was kind of against guys carrying guns because he yeah, wasn't gun token. That makes kind of sense because he said, you know, <laughs> uh, uh, somebody comes a creeping, you know, like a yeah. black cat do, and then uh, that could have been Ronnie. <laughs> That could have been Ronnie all laid up in there. And just... <laughs> oh God! Um, yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. So he, yeah, because I've had to make a like an escape out of windows a couple of times. I, mean... <laughs> I think that's what Ronnie said. He was afraid that's how he was going to die. Uh, what a way to get way to way to go get shot in the back by a jealous husband <laughs> oh god <laughs> uh, uh, well, speaking of uh, ronnie and, and moving right along did skinner <laughs> ever win uh any awards uh uh like you know grammys or anything like that um no, I, they, I don't think they had a song over 10 on Billboard charts, to tell you the truth. I don't remember. I don't think Sweet Home Alabama ever got over. Oh, really? Yeah, I don't know. I don't. It never hit number one. Uh, I don't think it got over, I don't know, five or six, maybe. I don't know. I guess if you were in the top 10, uh, you were pretty you doing Yeah, it got good. in the top 10, but yeah, it never hit number one. They got to be in the top five for a classic uh, band, you know, uh, classic albums. I'm not you know. exactly sure where that was on the, ch on the charts, but yeah, it, they never had a number one. Yeah. Um, and then somebody here was, uh, <coughs> they were also talking about speaking of Ronnie. Did you ever ride in a car with Ronnie? 
And no, he, I don't think I was driving. ever in a car where Ronnie was driving. I don't think no? I ever was. No. Did he uh, lose his license and couldn't drive, or what was the deal? Because nobody yeah, ever talked about drove. Ronnie driving. I never saw him drive. I don't know. Wow, that's weird. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's that's a good yeah. question. That person asked this, uh, and because I, I was although I read although it. although Judy bought him a a jeep because i went with her to when she bought that uh she wanted me to look at that 76 uh, cj uh cj6 a long red jeep that ronnie had uh, i went and, and looked at it you know and made sure it was okay before she bought it for him and and but uh, well, I did see him sitting behind the wheel of it once. I don't, I you know, I don't really remember. But they, they, he got it to pull bad company. You know, they pulled bad company with that boat, with a jeep. Maybe Gary drove it. I don't know. I don't remember really. Hmm. <laughs> That's kind of crazy. That's a good point. Yeah, a good question. But I don't, um, I don't remember ever riding with Ronnie. Uh huh. Then somebody asked. Craig mentioned about. Uh, Michael Cardell Cardelloni, uh, the current drummer for Leonard Skinner, uh, being a great drummer. And, and, and this person says, why don't you get a couple uh, of the Leonard Skinner members on the podcast? Their management <laughs> won't let them come on here. Yeah. They, no, uh, it's they not like, me. yeah. You no, know, management <laughs> hates me. Yeah, they do. They hate Craig. Uh, they, they tried to have you thrown out one, one time. I remember. Oh yeah. That. Yeah. They got yeah. that guy Tim. He he's the one that contacted Gary to get on Artemis's record and kind of worked behind the management's back to do it. And oh God, management found out who 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 got Gary to do it. They were, you know, <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, Tim. Was, got he Tim Gary's friend Tim, the the next door neighbor. He was a Little kid when I knew him, got he's about six four and a big old boy these days. He said he told him he told him up there, he said, I'll come up there and whip your damn ass. Or he goes, what I'll and do. Gary probably did it to get back at him. But, you know, like, <laughs> like, here, take this. I'm gonna go I'm gonna go play on Dolly's album and and tough shit. <laughs> uh yeah, well, you know, I mean, who knows? But uh, <laughs> that, that story like is that. funny, and that's the way I did hear it too. That they they kind of asked Gary if he would maybe be able to play slide on a on a record. And he goes, "No, oh, no, I'm too sick." And they said, "Well, it's Dolly." He goes, "Boy, I'm feeling better." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think the fact that he was able to do it at his house, too, yeah. he did it at his own yeah. studio too. So. I still haven't heard the uh, the version of Ronnie singing it yet. I think Ronnie sings it and Dolly sings it. There's two different versions. Oh, could I haven't heard that. that. Uh -uh. Yeah, I, I could be wrong about that, but I, I swear I thought that's what I heard. You guys out there, let me know in the comments um, about that. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so we can't we can't get anybody on. I mean, if they came on here, they'd be in trouble. Oh, they wouldn't God, do it anyway. Yeah. They wouldn't do it anyway, but, uh, but you know, it's, uh, it's, it's something we support them though. Right, Craig, you know, we, uh, we Oh yeah, them. I ain't got, yeah, I support those guys. Shit. And then, uh, you talked a little bit about the video, um, where you guys were fishing or what you, do you, where was that, that place that came I think it was Lake Delancey, I believe. Yeah, they had a big campground there. Yeah, I, I, if I'm not mistaken, that's the only place I remember fishing with Ronnie and them was Lake Delancey. I suppose they had a camping you, area. It looked like you had a couple boats there, so you must have brought a couple. <laughs> boats. They re we rented one down down there. I think yeah. we rented both of them. We did, I don't think we took boats with us. That I don't remember. I don't think we did. I think oh, okay. Because they did. Yeah, you could rent a boat there. That had to have been where it was. Because Gary and Gene was in one boat, and then you must have been in the boat with Ronnie uh, filming. I somebody. think we, I think we, I think me and Sue and Chad had our own boat. I think we had three boats. Oh, maybe you were filming him from your boat then. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. We had our own boat. 
Yeah, he had yeah, Judy. Yeah, and Gary and Martha had a boat. Me and Sue and Chad had a boat. And you know, Ron, yeah, three boats. Boat. So yeah. that was Lake Delancey. Uh huh. Yeah, Gene talks about Lake Delancey. Um, I, I guess. Uh, well, it looked like uh, you guys were the only ones there. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see anybody else. You had the whole campground to yourself there. It wasn't a very crowded place, I don't think, no. Yeah, uh, okay, let me see. Oh, uh, this person asked, what Facebook group does Craig answer questions on? And Craig isn't in a group. <laughs> I don't it's I just, don't belong yeah. to any of those groups. Yeah, neither do I. It's, it's on his own Facebook page, and I don't know, you know, Craig might still have some room on there. Um but yeah, if you're yeah, I'm, Craig's... I'm, I'm having to, I'm having to be kind of uh, selective these days. <laughs> I always have, have been. God, I get so many of those young girls. Gee, many Christmas. Those, <laughs> those but they're really, they're really Indians. <laughs> I mean, and I get them. I, 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 I get them using five different names. It's the same face. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah, it's a scam. <laughs> my god <laughs> yeah they want to they want to uh and, get they want you to get them get you to fall in love with them so you can send them some money so they can fly to see you, you know, and, then, and, then, you and then and then every time i go through my friend requests and and and, and request and uh uh approved friend requests right away they hi how are you yeah, yeah. I, i've been fine have you heard about the government, the money the government wants to give you? I saw your name on a list where they have money they want to give you. you yeah, know? just give her your bank account and she'll give you the money. <laughs> God almighty. <laughs> yeah, I swear. I it, but every you time. On, and it always, do. hi, how are you? If you do get on Craig's friend list, it's pure entertainment. It's just <laughs> all day fat bashing. <laughs> just all day. And then he'll throw in some political stuff, but then, you know, he gets back into his fat bashing and he's I it's say, not he's, fat bashing, it's information. <laughs> so what's gonna happen to your fat ass if you don't? <laughs> Yeah, he's Jeez, consistent. Bro. I'll tell you, you know, there's people that try to get him to stop, and he just he ain't stopping. He, you know, he, it's he, my destiny, just like yeah. this. But you know, it's something I got to do. You know, people just want me to talk about Skinner stuff. You know, but I have a platform. I got to talk about things I want to talk about. You know, I mean, you know, I mean, God, you know, people. You don't watch a, a podcast with somebody blabbering all the time. You want to know a little bit about them. God, uh, pe you know, yeah, pe people that, oh, they said, oh, we did, I was, it was so nice seeing it, your son grow, growing up, you know, and with Ronnie and them. And it was uh, so yeah. nice hearing about your sister that's 90 years old, that's, you know, still sharp, and you come from a good bloodline. And, uh, I had a guy call me the other day, just a couple of days ago. Oh my God, he was just telling me what a wonderful life it seemed that I had lived, and and I had to agree with him and say, man, looking back, I can't think of anything else I'd have rather done. You know, I mean, God, I've been around the world twelve times and stayed in five star hotels and and ate the finest restaurants there is and traveled first class all the time and just greeted, you know, like a celebrity and, you know, lived the life of a rock star. You know, I didn't didn't make the money, but I drove their cars and lived with them. <laughs> and, you know, just, you know, just, um, you know. Uh, yeah, I mean. It's been, that's... It's been fun, you know. That's why you can sit here and do a podcast because people, you know, they love that Leonard Skinner and they just want to be able to s see stories about it and stuff. And well, yeah, the people just want to know things and my God, and they say, they act like, I mean, there's, there's 12 people that survived that plane crash, you know, and, you know, Artemis and, and Leslie are the only real two banned people, but, you know, and I guess nobody, 
well, there's Kevin Elson who grew up with them and, you know, played in bands and was their sound engineer, their first ro roadie and everything. But, you know, he's, he's gone, gone far beyond, you know, doing podcasts about Leonard Skinner, you know, he's worked with the, some of the best, you know, Michael Jackson, uh, you know, just, uh, you know, just everybody, you know, Van Morrison, uh, you know, uh, just, you know, everybody, just, you know, Journey, Mr. Big, you know, just, you know, just, you know, so many people. Yeah. And then Clayton, Clayton Johnson, you know, came from Bill Graham and God, Clayton was like one of Gary's best friends, man. I mean, uh, um, Gary gave Clayton his, his very first guitar, you know. And he still got it and everything, you know. And Clayton gave us those sp those stickers to sell and stuff. But you know, he's you know his his wife is running Bill Graham Productions. He you know doesn't really feel like doing this. It's it, you know it takes a lot of energy to <laughs> to do this. But for me, it's kind of like if I didn't do this, my God, I wouldn't be doing anything. I mean, I was this this kind of at my age kind of keeps keeps me. Trying, trying to think, think, think a little bit. You know, if I didn't have this to do, I, there's not too much I'd have to think about. You know, so this kind of keeps me on my toes, keeps me a little bit as mentally sharp as I can be, having the serious brain damage that I have. <laughs> and oh, oh yeah, and, and and I'm such a oh my god a year ago today i was the biggest slime ball scum ball <laughs> pig oh my god i i went to gary's funeral and i gathered up all the funeral brochures i could so i can go home and sell them on ebay oh i'm pathetic oh my god i <laughs> Oh God, I'm just the most horrible person in the whole wide world. Yeah, well, I mean, that one guy, that one guy that was slamming you on Facebook, he came back a year later and said, and I don't take it back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't, you know, I don't try to make as many as friends like, you know, I, I mean, it's obvious. I, I pick on fat people, so I'm picking on eighty percent of you to start with. So I don't, yeah. oh, I don't expect to make any friends on here. You know, people, people say you may, you know, if you was a little nicer to fat people, maybe you'd get more donations. You know, but uh, yeah, if, if, if you know, if if a bullfrog had pistols on his hips, he could shoot the snakes off. You know, well, I always tell people I have a <laughs> I have a theory about it, and you know, see, Craig used to be fat. And oh, if he yeah. don't if he don't criticize fat people, he'll get fat again. So he has <laughs> to keep that going. So he'll he'll go. Oh, oh yeah, true. that's right. <laughs> I criticized all those people. So if oh, I get true. fat, they're going to criticize me. So you won't, that's your oh, diet. God, yeah. That's the diet plan you're on. <laughs> oh yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> okay. Back Actually, you know, when I did, when I did the podcast about, and I said that the, the woman bought me the wheelchair because she was the laziest guy that she'd ever met. That's not a lie. And it's only got worse since I've gotten older, but you know, ha even having the brain damage, you know, I'm smart enough to know that if I don't get up and move around, I can't eat anything because, you know, so. Oh, yeah, you just yeah, do so, a sloth. You know, I've, I've adjusted, I've adjusted my diet to my activity, which, so I don't eat much. <laughs> <laughs> Well, what do you get? You rode your banshee the other day, right? I mean, you was doing yeah. that. And you play golf, and uh, what else do you do, Craig? <laughs> oh, I do all kind of stuff. I like to pick on myself more than other people do. Yeah. That's what I can say. No, I do all kind of stuff. God, I I shoot a bow and arrow, man, and it's a forty-three pound pull. So you know, it takes yeah, it takes pretty, a lot that's of pretty hard. It yeah. takes a lot of this muscles in here all through here to pull like that you know so yeah that that kind of gives you a little upper body workout when you do that i do other stuff
Yeah, I mean, you know, it, you must do it in between posts because I see, you know, like, a, <laughs> like I think it's like all the way up to four o'clock in the morning. I've seen you posting some stuff, you know. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm. Uh, so it's just like you yeah. Just I was thinking, up. you know, you know, I, I I I go to sleep early, you know. So I, you know, and I and, and it's like. You know, it's take it's like I take a nap until the, <laughs> like three and get up and and wake up and do these do these things here and then uh, you know try to get them get them done by six and you know and then normally I've been staying up here lately I've I've been uh, getting on my simulator and and, and flying uh, trying to fly down the coast of of, of from uh, JFK to to Miami and God, there's not much of a coastline, you know, you don't really realize it until you travel it in a plane and go, you know, it's, there's a lot of, uh, zigzagging in and out until you get around the, the Carolinas till you really get a smooth coastline. And it's really, really crazy. Yeah. It's, it's like we were talking, you ought to try to, uh, reenact the JFK junior flight. <laughs> see what he did wrong <laughs> i'm not a very good navigator man i'm not good with the controls i mean i can follow the coastline down that's pretty easy you know but uh yeah, yeah i'm not a very good navigator so you're not an instrument pilot no i've tried to find the airplane crash stuff sight stuff and there's there's kind of videos that kind of show you how to do it but i yeah, I'm I'm not real good at it. <laughs> I've found fields that look similar and you know and reenacted the whole thing, you know. It's kind of cool. You know. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let me see here. This is back to this JoJo thing, you know. Um this person asks, uh we've covered this I think before, but um did Jojo really get fired and uh would she have been hired back do you think Craig Oh but you know what I I kind I kind of don't even um uh, yeah I don't I don't know that was a like I like I've said before that was a touchy situation cuz Jojo and Alan got a little bit too chummy and uh, ronnie was kind of fearful that that kind of stuff would get back home and it just yeah, well, was she was acting kind of crazy though i mean she was jojo she was, was? Of, yeah uh, from what i understand she was getting a little bit like you know too aggressive with it and uh i think there was even a time that uh that she even made some comments in front of alan's wife but uh, no, yeah. I don't think that ever happened. But I, I have to think Kathy knew about something was going on because they they stayed in the same room. I mean, they, you know, they were always seen together. I mean, it was, yeah, you know. <laughs> you know. Um, you know, somebody says get Steve Vest on. He's the guy that does the videos. Yeah, I don't know Who's who Steve that is. Vest? Steve Vest. That sounds familiar. Maybe He's that we guy that does the videos and claims yeah, he was. I don't know who that is. That's I, a, claims I'll he have to was, look that up. Maybe we should know who that is, Craig. I think he's that guy that claims he knows everybody real well and stuff, but I was around, around him for four years, and I don't think I ever met the guy. And it's just kind of weird that I was around yeah. him from from the end of seventy three till the beginning of seventy eight, and I never seen the guy. You know? That's when like a lot of people come up and they'll go, "Oh yeah, I was a roadie for Leonard Skinner," and they'll say, "Hey, you know so and so?" No, he's lying. <clears throat> but I don't claim to know all their friends. You know, I mean, my word isn't the final say so. Yeah, <clears throat> it's just what I remember. God, I okay. Don't know everything about this band, I just know a little. And I can guess the rest, you know. <laughs> well, this person asks, "Is the blonde in the video your first wife?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Well, yeah, you know, they were all good looking women back then, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they were, they did. They looked really good. They didn't have any fat on them at all. They were, <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, they were look, good, look, good looking little, little, uh, I don't ladies. think any of my wife's ever weighed yeah. over a hundred and. Yeah. 20, 20. So who was it? There was like three girls in there. I think it was, uh, Judy. Sue and, and uh, my ex-wife, Sue and, and Martha and Judy. And yeah. And Jean was running around there with a shirt off and, uh, yeah. And his I daughter, was... and I can't remember her <laughs> name. Yeah. I can't remember her name. But uh, there's yeah. there's still more video that, you know, a lot of video Craig's got. So one of these days when he decides how he wants to let people see it, maybe he can narrate. You know, you can narrate that, right, Craig? And, and tell oh, yeah. what's going on. And that, that's a good <laughs> little project for you. Yeah. Uh, go, you know, go through the uh, videos and, and narrate it while it's all so everybody knows exactly where you're at, you know, where you were smoking that hash. You know, on the bus and why <laughs> all through tour all through Europe. <laughs> and I got it in Holland. I yeah. smuggled that stuff all over Europe and Japan and hey, God, if I, I saw got where caught with that stuff in Japan, I'd still be there. <laughs> yeah, because because uh Paul McCartney, he he got I think he oh got busted God. twice or first time they let him go and then the second time he just he just had a yeah, bag Yeah, you of didn't want to get busted with hash in Japan back in 74. Oh, yeah. That was, that was no, bad. I, no, I'd, I'd still be there. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know what the jail's over there is probably pretty nice, though. <laughs> I doubt that. <laughs> Compared to like. They don't even have a rust. They don't even have a Western style toilet. You got to <laughs> squat. Oh yeah, like on oh, a yeah. tiled floor. Even in a damn hotel, the five store hotel, you got a you're, you're walking around a hole in the floor. And what the hell is that? But you know, but then they have a Western style one too. But it's hilarious. Yeah. Yeah. That happened to me in Milan, Italy. When I was over in Milan, Italy, this girl comes in and sits down. Right, you know, the toilets didn't have a wall or anything. She just sat right down and was peeing, and I. I kind of looked over at her and she's like, what are you looking at? You know, I was like, okay, I didn't, I wasn't used to that. <laughs> and I never, never, ever, ever have tried to use a bidet. Everybody, everybody goes, Oh, Craig, that guy, you got hot water shoot, shooting up your asshole. <laughs> I, just, I never tried. I've, you hope I've, it's I've, hot. I've, sat, I've been on a million toilets that had them, but I never tried one. I, I was over at the lane's house and they got one over there. And, uh, <laughs> I think Zach put that thing in and, uh, it don't have a heater on it. And I accidentally hit that button wrong and I was trying it out, you know, and, uh, that thing, that'll goose you, man. Uh, <laughs> there you go. Well, that's shooting hot water right up your asshole. I don't know what, I don't know what Zach's doing. I don't know what, what Zach's doing with that in his bathroom, but, uh, but yeah, he's, he's, he's seems like it gets your, you get, wouldn't you get your whole ass wet? I don't know. Is it, is it... No, it's <laughs> dialed in right on the crack, man. It's, you know, yeah, it is. it's like a, yeah, it's amazing. I doesn't know where your asshole is. I mean, you know, it's, <laughs> I mean to be talking shit, but it's, it's definitely <laughs> dialed right. He had it dialed in good. <laughs> is there a little laser on it to find your asshole? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I've always, you know, worked in like I used to uh, work for a flooring company and we went to these really expensive million, multi-million dollar homes and they always had them in there. But I, <laughs> I never, I never tried, tried it. You know, I never had a need to or anything. <laughs> uh, but first time I ever tried one was over on Zach's toilet. And I said, hey, Zach, you know, that's kind of he goes, you like that, Griff? <laughs> okay so back to the comments uh <coughs> can't wait to hear kid rock's new song um people are crossing the border is that the name of it the one i heard was uh uh uh, uh i miss you i miss um i miss you miss 
America, yeah. I miss you. I miss Miss oh. America, yeah. <clears throat> so it hasn't. They've been gone, it, they haven't been gone way yet. too long. I miss you, Miss America. You've been gone way too long. Ain't that right, Leon? Yeah, look who's there. <laughs> <laughs> Leon, you know, Leon's been kidnapped, man. Who? How many people know a dog that's been kidnapped? He wanted to make his appearance. And you got him back, me. which He's is crazy. Bugging me. How many days was he gone, Craig, when he got kidnapped? Oh, God, he was gone. He was gone a long time. I went and got another dog. Yeah, I know you were. Got like, this other you know. dog and named, named Wicker Leon, and then I got Leon back and had to rename rename uh <laughs> rename it was I and, it, and it was one of your ex-wives that took off my with fourth it, right? one yeah she, i'm in the area you mind if i stop by for a couple of days i go no i guess it'd be all right you know and then and then she when well, she got here and she wanted to stay i went no that ain't gonna happen <laughs> she got pissed <laughs> off and stole my dog oh yeah and i know there was some really graphic details about things she was going to do it was kind of like you know that movie play misty for me or something you know yeah but, uh, yeah that was one of those things that cost me a quick 10 grand yeah <clears throat> yeah but uh, <laughs> then they were trying to sell your dog and no they tried to steal that damn sheriff out there tried to person at the at the shelter tried to steal him Said they yeah. said they adopted him, and she took she took she took him home with her. That dog, she as soon as that dog got there, she took it home with her. That dog never never stayed in that shelter one day. She's, you know, he's just so damn cute. She just took him right home with her, boy. And you had to get the sheriff or some. Girl oh yeah, was, they 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 jail. denied that the dog was there. They said they had adopted it out. Yeah, they wanted they they wanted to steal him. Yeah, I had it, to. I had to get an attorney on him. Didn't the girl that was in it, jail with your ex-wife is she? Your your she was singing about having Leon, right? And then oh, she was in there going, "I know Leonard Skinner. I was married to this guy Craig Ree. Was the woman that was in there? She was only in there for the weekend, and she came home and looked, got home and looked me up and found me on Facebook, and that I had a five thousand dollar reward on Leon. She got a hold of me and said, hey, I know where your dog is. Oh, man, that was a quick bump. Yeah, so I had to go to, I, then, I, then I called out there and I said, hey, you know, the woman out there said, said you guys got my dog. No, that dog was adopted out. So I, luckily I knew somebody that worked for, the dog person worked for PETA. And she found out what was happening. She goes, no, if they give that dog to somebody, they have to know exactly who they gave it to and where it went, you know. And she called up the, the captain of the police department and said, you know, you guys better come up with this guy's dog or you're in trouble. And so they they uh, they found Leon. <laughs> so yeah, Leon, you know, it's, it's, it's just goes right along with Leonard Skinner, man. All that. <laughs> Leon's living the life of a Leon dog. You know? Yeah. It's always a, a story. But uh <clears throat> now that's pretty well. I'm so glad you and, got me Leon. And, me and me and Leon went and picked up Leon. <laughs> and then <laughs> I had to rename him Wicker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh but but Leon's cool. He's pretty cool. He's but a, it don't matter when I when I yell Leon, both of them come running anyway. So it don't matter <laughs> if you if you yell for one, both of them come because they they don't you know. <laughs> this is the way it is. Yeah, they're they're a lot smaller in person than they than you think they are. They're tiny little dogs. He's you five know. pounds. Wicker Wicker. I took him to the vet. I had to go buy him a, a bag of 28 pound bag of foods, $140. And, uh, yeah, I put, him, put him on the scale. He was right at 13 pound. And the last time he was there, he was like 14, five. So I've had him on a diet. So yeah, if you eat less, you'll look, you, Hey, uh, here's a, a breaking news here. Wait a minute. <laughs> Breaking news, the less you eat, the more you may weight you'll lose. 
<laughs> Breaking yeah. news. The more you, uh, the less unless, you eat, the more weight you'll lose. Unless you have a bad thyroid. And then you can't get rid of it. <laughs> Here's Craig with the breaking news. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then we see back here. To, uh, someone's asking whose motorhome that was at the. Uh, at that the was park. a rental. It's a rental motorhome. It was a mm -hmm. nice one. Yeah, that yeah, was probably a, like a '72 model or '73 model, maybe, huh? <clears> oh, <throat> uh, God, that was in '70. What was that? That was in 70. Well, it had to be 76 because that's when I got the camera. Right now. Yeah, 76. Yeah, it had to be 76. That's when I got those cameras. <clears throat> and then somebody mentions here, uh, you need to come up with a, a bumper sticker and sell them that says i miss america i think you'd sell a, a ton of those <laughs> if you came up with an i miss america bumper sticker uh i'd i'd put one on my bumper. i miss i, I miss like miss stickers. america yeah yeah i, I miss miss, miss america <laughs> <laughs> yeah. i remember when uh obama grounded the thunderbirds and um and the other that other uh jet team who who's that other jet team he just took them he just shut them down the just, blue uh, angels blue angels yeah yeah just uh just just took them just took them right out and they said yeah. we're going to save money we're not going to have them anymore yeah yeah them them politicians they got enough power to do anything they want you know they're like kings we we elect them people to control us yeah but they think anyway it seems like and somebody mentions have chad on just to talk about lacy's rules <laughs> yeah that would be interesting you know we ought yeah. to get him back on here and do that i'll ask him to see if he'll come back on again he's been pretty busy lately um see here did uh let me see uh oh yeah somebody said they would like to see the last comment, somebody would like to see more videos from Japan. <clears throat> I don't uh, know where they ever saw the first videos from Japan, but <clears throat> you got a lot of Japan videos, don't you? I got, I, when Mike Estes was with the band, I set up a Super 8 millimeter uh, camera at the soundboard every night in japan and filmed the whole concert but it's just one one camera from the soundboard but as soon as the as soon as the concert was over i'd run out and get the camera you know but when they were packing up the soundboard and while i was out there i would i would film the crowd leaving and it was that was pretty amusing watching a japanese crowd yeah. So those are videos I didn't even know about there. You got a whole No, no other... nobody's ever seen those. I've got lots of I got lots of stuff nobody's ever seen. It's still wow. still still on eight millimeter film. I've you know, lots of stuff. Wow, you gotta do something with that there, Craig. Uh, yeah, that's undiscovered <laughs> gold. To do. That's Skinner gold, man. <laughs> I'm I'm retired, man. I'm I'm not very motivated these days. <laughs> this podcast is about the only thing I do anymore. It is kind. Of, it does take up a lot of time. It does. Because, it, I mean, yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, I especially I you know when God and I I sit here and the phone rings, man, and I get phone calls and and it's just like everybody asks me like i'm supposed to like i'm some kind of saving grace it's like oh my god i watch all i've watched all your podcasts three times i'm going my god that's yeah good. how do they do that that's a you lot know, I, oh man it's just you know it's just like i can't wait till the next one and it's just like you know i know i i know i'm not very good at this i mean i know what a good podcast guy does and stuff man and i go blah, 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 blah. <laughs> you know <laughs> when i tell people about that they go well that's kind of what it makes it amusing you guys just kind of you know and you're not it's like definitely no re rehearsed or whatever anything. you know but 
You know, I don't know. I, I, I'm surprised that we've done 147 of these dark on things, and uh, it don't look like there's no end to it. I mean, we're doing like three week, and I, I told Griff today, I goes, man, I hope you got something to talk about. And he goes, he goes, God, we got a lot of questions. I goes, well, it's a good thing. I says, man, I, how do we? How have we done 150 of these things? You know, and just keep talking about all this stuff. Well, I still. I said, how is, how would we survive with all these without all these questions people ask? You know, and I, I like feel these weird. Discs right here, are these Kent Kent Griffith discs. I haven't even started to go through these yet. So we got a lot of skin information still that we can. <laughs> that we can trickle in you know but uh yeah people act like you know man i'm supposed to have all the ink i, I was a roadie man i mean i i wasn't inside the mind of ronnie van zandt god i only knew the guy four years you know i people act like i was you know best friends i was i mean i lived with them for four years all those guys basically you know and kind of know their idiosyncrasies or whatever but man it's you know, to, 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 to try to sit down and say, what would Ronnie think about this? Or what would Ronnie think about that? That's, you know, that's, that's, I, I, I can give my opinion. I'd say, you know, a lot of, a lot of you ask me what, what I think. I, you know, you all have your opinion. What do you, what, what do you think? You know, what do you think he would be writing songs about these, these days? You know, it's just <clears throat> about the same way I could answer it. I, your guess is as good as mine, you know, but, you know, I think he'd be writing stuff about things that are that are going on. You know, and there's certainly not a lot of uh, enough stuff to write about. That's for talk. No, right? there'd be a ton more songs on the radio that you'd be hearing for sure. You know, yeah, it's, just a waste. You know, it was interesting to think about though. Yeah. All but, right, Craig. Uh, I say let's wrap it up, man. Let's. I was. I you. You must be a mind reader, man. I was thinking yeah. the same thing. Let's. Well, let's get out of here while the getting's good, you know. <laughs> yeah, and stay tuned for the uh, for the uh, video at the end there. The doctor that uh, received all the injured folk uh, that came off the plane, and you have to turn it up real close, uh, or so you can hear it. And listen real close. Uh, yeah, Parsons Land Clearing and Services. Yeah, uh, yeah that, there you go. He's one of, one of our disciples. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> boy, Dave, the disciple. He's been sending me all kind of stuff. Kathy, God, they said, God, Dave sent me a, a case, and it's so big. And it was, he said, she said, it was full. She said it was just full of stuff. She said, "She said I think it cost like ninety some dollars just to ship that thing." Yeah, thing. that guy is unbelievable, man. He's, uh, he's <laughs> he something sends else. me all kind of stuff, man. He's definitely something. a disciple. <laughs> definitely. Yeah, really. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Uh, well, okay. You know, same old, same poll. This is podcast one forty seven, and I uh, want to thank all you Earthings for stopping by this morning and for the Stone Roadie Show, Wake and Bake, the Morning Buzz, and Happy Trails to you until we meet again. And um, stick around for the video. Yeah, and Are the see you later, out? alligator. Add the wild crocodile and cut. Rachel, I'm a direct Yes, I was wondering if it's possible to talk to Mr. Richmond. Hello. This for not Richmond. Yes, uh, Mr. Richmond, my name is Michael O'Hara. I'm just that I should call you. And, uh, you know, apparently you had quite a bit to do that night. It was and, a long night. Yeah, I imagine it was. Uh, I was just wondering if you could tell me, uh, I guess, your side of the story or or what happened. And as far as you can recollect, I know it was, you know, um, 15 years ago almost. Yeah. Well, I'm trying to think. Okay, that night, um, a good many of us were at the high school, uh, well, junior high school football game. And uh, I got a call. I was on call for the hospital stating that a plane had crashed and of course I was able to pull five or six doctors and uh, operating room nurse the um, 
Jones, director of nursing, and a couple of other people together. And of course, the first thought was, this is a drill. <laughs> right. But uh, anyway, uh, we came to the hospital, and uh, unlike most drills and things, we had about an hour to prepare before invitations were brought in. Uh, due to the fact that where the crash site was, it was pretty deep in the swamp. They're hard to get to and whatnot? Right. Right. I called the National Guard to get some uh, heavy vehicles to get in there. Of course, they authorized that. And, uh, let's see, the Coast Guard said it's a large helicopter with a light. We ended up with five helicopters, I believe, that night operating out of there. Wow. Um, then, um, with the 26th on board, um, let's see, one guy, the guy, I believe it's Artemis Powell. Yes, um, yes. He went to the Beecham Hospital, got somebody to carry him, which is a small, non emergency type hospital, about six miles from us. And then, uh, most of the rest of them all came in here, uh, were stabilized, some went straight to surgery, uh, some needed uh, some trauma, head injuries type things that we had to forward on to the University in Jackson. Uh, most of those were taken by our air ambulance. But um, I say it was a strange night because I, I'm being older, I had never heard of Leonard Skinner, you know. Of course, it, there was no Leonard Skinner, per se, as a person, and we were getting calls from all over the world. I remember New Zealand, Australia, England, all one of Leonard was dead. <laughs> I guess they were thankful that I was. <laughs> you know, that was just the name of the group. But um, the Gaines guy and his sister both uh, were killed, of course. Yes. Was, was it Ronnie Gaines? Uh, Ronnie Van Zant, Steve Gaines, yeah, Gaines girl. Cassie Gaines, and yeah. Dean Kilpatrick. Yeah, but, uh, I remember those bodies uh, being brought in. And it, it was a little bit different because it wasn't a local thing, you know, as far as people gawking and getting involved. But uh, we felt that uh, the hospital did a, an excellent job that night considering the nature and the trauma of the injuries of the people. Mm -hmm. um, I'm trying to think, well, what was their road manager's name? Ron Ackerman. Yeah. He and I had... Uh, a lot of conversations and things. Uh, I never did hear any more from him. But one time I'd heard he had a mental breakdown. But I uh, sure. I've heard the same thing, but I can't verify that, yes or no. But I have heard the same thing, yeah, before the crash. Right. Uh, one thing that sticks out in my mind, they had about uh, uh, $90,000 in cash, which was floating through the trees. Oh, really? And most of that uh, thousand or two was recovered. I remember that. Yes, I'm like everyone. Like the, I've talked to four people, and they said everything. You know, uh, you know, nobody. There was no looting or anything of that nature. Uh, there, 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 there was a chance, of course. Uh, nobody did. Uh, but they had carried their money in a briefcase, and of course, it burst open. Everything, but uh, they were very, very fortunate. So it seemed like all the ones that. Uh, that died in the uh, accident uh, were killed instantly, and the rest of them uh, did survive. And uh, that, you know. Right. Uh, without, I don't know, breaking any ethics or anything like that. Cause, like, were they like mostly head injuries? The ones that died. Uh, it was it was a combination. Combination. A combination of things. <laughs> Oh, none of the well, the mutilated anything. None of them mutilated. No, the, the FAA report uh, said head injuries and massive chest injuries. That's what I was going to say: chest trauma and uh, head injuries. But the, the survivors, uh, a lot of them had multiple broken bones, uh, some uh, severe head injuries, and these type of things. And uh, most of the were most of the. Uh, members of the band and road crew that were brought into the hospital conscious or uh yeah they were all pretty conscious really 
Right. It was a, sort of amazing because, uh, of course, they were getting some on the scene treatments as they could, but uh, they, you know, have been lying traumatized for an hour or more. Right. Laying there in the in the field or the woods for an hour, right? Right. I would imagine that was that was sure sent me into shock. I wouldn't be able to talk. Yeah, that was one of the concerns, the shock, these kind of things. But um, uh, our medical staff uh, reacted real, real well for you know a little area. We had a good emergency group and et cetera. So. Yes, uh, Mr. Dunnigan said that uh, it was amazing. Yeah. The job that uh, you did there. At the yeah, we were up. I'm trying to think. I think they called us around seven or something, between seven and eight. I don't remember exact, but I think it was around six thirty the next morning for most of us got out. Wow. So it was a very, very long night. Yeah. For everybody. Right. And of course, we were trying to uh, get a good, positive identification on them. So, uh, you know. Most of their personal effects had gotten knocked out, or they didn't have them with them. Or, you know, some of them, and uh, it was difficult to be sure before we started any notification or anything like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I was just my my question would be like when I love you, you said you mentioned it was Leonard Skinner and all that. When about did, did someone from the the rescue team tell you, or did one of the uh, people who were like one of the survivors did they tell you? You know, like we're a member, member of Leonard Skinner and we're like, yeah. It, uh, the, I, I was here at the hospital. I didn't go to the scene. We sent a couple of doctors down there, but um, some one of the members told them said who it was, and then I believe the FAA was started looking for the plane, too, because it had gone off the screen. Right. And um, I never did know for sure, but there were rumors that it was a little bit overloaded because they had some some people on the plane that uh, were not members of the... Uh, yeah, they had a few gaps. Yes, because I know we had problems with litigation on insurance and things. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, I guess um, I, I've asked this to everybody. Like, has this changed uh, your life in any way? Um, well, uh, not really, because right after that, we had a tornado that hit the town. And oh, okay. We killed nine and a half, 234 houses, and we treated 119 emergencies. So wow. You kind of have to take things in perspective. Yeah, and, right. Uh, it was a total different type of emergency because... You know, these were people you work with every day, and et cetera. So, as, as I said earlier, it's a little bit different type of emergency, you know. You know where the plane crash, you had an hour to prepare, and the other one, you didn't have two minutes to prepare, you know. Mm -hmm. But in, you know, in the healthcare business, we have to do these periodic drills on emergencies and things. And about six months prior to this plane crash, we had drilled with a plane crash. Oh, really? And uh, it's sort of ironic. Sure, yeah. Six our area is sort of a crossover with Atlanta to Dallas and Chicago and New Orleans type thing. You know, so we get a lot of overhead stuff. Okay. And one final question, if you don't mind. Um, when someone mentions the plane crash, or to you, or you hear it on the radio, or you know, whatever TV. What's the first thing that comes to your mind? Just the very first, like I guess it's a long night. Yeah, it was a long night, but uh, I, you know, I still hear them on the radio. Of course, they you know started the new band and all. Yeah, and they've been. I go back because I don't know, I've seen a lot of those guys, you know, in very serious trauma. Mm-hmm. Uh, through the power of medicine and the grace of God, they, you know, are back. They're back performing. Yeah. So, okay. Actually, that's, that's a great way to end my thesis right there. With that. Perfect. Okay. Uh, thank you so much for your time. What part of Canada are you from? I'm from Toronto. Toronto? Yeah. Uh, I went through there once and spent, well, going to a convention in Montreal. That's a gorgeous country through there. A uh, little north here is really pretty. Really pretty. Uh, Good fishing. And yeah, on the north side, uh, 
through those lakes and all this gorgeous stuff. <laughs> we got off the interstate and all this stuff. But I, I like to look at the back roads. Right. Well, good luck to you here. I, I thank you, and again, I can't thank you enough for your time and okay. and the, the job you did putting the guys back together so they could be on the road and we can listen to them. That's what we're supposed to do. All right. Thank you so much, sir. Bye-bye.